Thank you very much, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today uh, to talk about, it says here, virtualization and, or cloud. And in fact, I'm luring you a little bit, because I don't think it's going to be virtualization or cloud. I think it's going to be virtualization and cloud, which is what I'm going to talk more about. But let me start here. Um, some of you filled out a uh, survey today, kindly. That's, uh, so we uh, present here just a quick snapshot of uh, what is in where the audience is with these two uh, technologies today. What you see here is everybody is investing in uh, public, <coughs> private, cloud, and in virtualization. The dark one is cloud, the, uh, the paler one is uh, virtualization. So you can see here there's good interest in both technologies, but where the bulk of the investment is going today is actually the virtualization. About 25% use converged uh, infrastructure solutions, and another 70% are thinking of it. So this is really a key technology to get to discuss more about today. I know there'll be presentations around that, but uh, uh, do ask questions. So what do people say here uh, about uh, the barriers to virtualization? Is a complexity is also the cost and security, but complexity is a key topic that I think many uh, of the speakers will address today. Around cloud, about a third use uh, of the uh, 35 people who filled in uh, the, the uh, survey today, they use private cloud and about 55% uh, use public cloud. This is quite similar to what we found in, in a, a, an Irish survey, which I'll refer to, slightly higher use of public cloud, which is an interesting point that I'll get back to. But the cloud drivers for people in the audience here, cost reduction, uh, its scalability, and productivity increases. And then the specific service disaster recovery is very important here. So I think uh, this is something that should be addressed in the presentations also today. Uh, Barriers, on the other hand, and there are a lot of barriers here, uh, which is around security, especially also integration with uh, traditional IT, and the transparency of the business case, something that I'll try to discuss and really something that you should ask the following speakers. I'm sure many will address it, but uh, do uh, ask all the questions because this is a, a big, big question for cloud. So now move on to my own uh, presentation, what I was planning to talk about. First, a little bit about demands on IT from the business, because that's, that's where all the demand comes from. Then moving on a bit about um, talking about IT maturity and virtualization and cloud, what are the benefits, what are the, the drawbacks or concerns, and where are uh, companies in Europe and in Ireland uh, today? What can they do to move forward? So that's where I will conclude the presentation. Four steps to look at uh, to move forward in your modernization of IT. Let me get started with the business challenges. And if any of you are thinking, oh, we've heard that story five million times, then really forget that thought. Maybe you have heard it five million times. This cannot be said often enough. No IT investments are made today unless they support a challenge in the business, something the business needs to improve. It has to be very specific. What I've put up here are generic points, because when you have only space for how many are there, about 10, uh, then it will have to be generic. But in your own company, it's not a generic thing. It's a very specific issue. And make it specific, make sure you support solving that issue. But some of them will center around interacting better with the clients shorter time to market, better cooperation internally and perhaps even internationally, increasing the productivity and better resource utilization, becoming more uh, innovative and other issues, of course. But there is one key point that's always coming back. We need cost reductions. That is nothing else, no solution to anything else without also reducing the cost. And then a slightly worrying thing here. I'm sure many of you have seen it. IT is hindering the change. Many of you, I'm sure, have been scapegoats, felt like scapegoats for why 
the business cannot change very often. I don't know the number of times I've heard uh, people from business saying, ah, oh, yeah, we want to change, but we can't because our IT systems cannot support this change. This is something to bear in mind, and what the new technologies uh, offer you is the opportunity to actually change IT to do what it was meant to do from the very beginning, which is to enable businesses to work in a better way. I said there was this challenge here of, on the one hand, wanting to do more. We need to support all these new purposes. On the other hand, we need to support uh, to reduce the cost. So we need to do more for less money. So what is the solution to that? Overall, the solution, the answer to that is transformation. You need to do things in a different way. We need to increase the efficiency in the IT side and in the back office to set funding free. Some will start here transforming the IT, say, let's look at the uh, IT situation. How can we streamline that? How can we make it more flexible? How can we make it more agile? That will set funding free. But the real benefit comes when you also start transforming the business processes. Historically, most IT has gone into back office for very good reasons, because that's a generic function. That is, uh, accounting, uh, procurement is more or less the same across uh, all uh, companies, no matter which industry. So transforming, that means a lot of work is, has gone into there, but there's still a lot of efficiency gains to be made by streamlining, by putting in the right types of IT. We're going to talk more about that. We'll set funding free. Where the interest is moving today is towards this side. How you can use IT to do new things, to change your business model, do things in different way, address new markets. Uh, the example I put up here is by investment, you can change a normal storefront, for instance, to go online. That is very uh, relevant in uh, the retail industry. And for most industries, there are changes you can make to uh, work better with your clients, which will position the company better. And today, all change requires IT. So this example here, but not the only one, where IT can really enable, uh, enable changes in the business. Requires funding, and that's why a usual process is you start here, you transform in the IT, in the back office, setting funding free, which you can then invest. Of course, there's no need to go through that process. Some companies are doing well, have the money, can start over there. So the technologies we fit, uh, we talk about today, where do they fit in? Virtualization is mainly about changing the IT. But as I said, it will have implications for the business. And make sure this happens. If you don't look at it, it's not going to happen. You could say, as IT people, it's not your problem. It is your problem. Because that is a guarantee for your success, for your continued funding. Cloud will work at all the three different uh, levels. Uh, and is more into uh, defining new business model. Uh, but still, this doesn't happen automatically. You need to bring in the business side. So looking quickly here at maturity, we are now getting to talk more about the technologies. You can talk of maturity as a, as a step ladder uh, here. S consolidation, standardization, you can discuss the order, but it's been around for a long time. There's still a lot of work to do. Next step, virtualization, which will increase technology utilization uh, and therefore uh, reduce uh, the cost and add flexibility. But really, the next step, automation, is going to add a lot more to it because what you then do is you make efficient uh, the uh, other resources, which are often the, uh, the half of the cost. Uh, you take out human cost by replacing uh, human interaction with software. And finally, on this maturity ladder, uh, cloud will be the next step, uh, adding self-service chargeback to uh, the infrastructure. So, but that's a lot more to cloud. It's also a transformation of the way, you, real transformation of it from being uh, something you own to 
be delivered to I, delivering IT to the business users as a service. So it's transforming the way people work, it's transforming the way you uh, interact with IT, you tap into larger pools. So no organization is at just one single step here. They will have different parts of their IT being at the very different levels. So don't expect just moving nicely up. You will have be stretched over the whole spectrum. In a way, cloud is a step on the maturity ladder, but it's also a lot more than that because it's a real paradigm shift where you change from owning IT to tap into existing pools and sharing the resources, which is what really uh, brings up uh, the efficiency and flexibility. So a quick look across uh, the three types here, traditional, virtualized, or cloud. I'm not going to read through all of these. Uh, you can do that yourself, and I'm sure you know uh, most of these uh, technologies quite well. Uh, traditional, the key point is that you have it fully under control. You have control of the performance, uh, and there is a one-to-one -one relationship between your software, your applications, and business processes, and uh, the uh, te underlying technology. So that gives you a lot of control, but it's also expensive and inflexible. Virtualization, the next step, decouples the relationship between uh, the hardware and the software, so you get, can increase the utilization, and it gives you more flexibility. Uh, but still, it's uh, something you own, is you have the slow provisioning, uh, and you have full control over configuration, but perhaps not always uh, over the uh, performance. The last technology, the cloud, uh, as I said, now you have much better flexibility, but you also lose some of the control here. So, why would anybody not want to just move everything that way? Well, that is in the restrictions of the different things. You would stay for some legacy solutions that cannot really decouple or have a lot of inter, uh, input output. Uh, for instance, databases, very transactional databases might uh, benefit from staying in traditional environments. Maybe the business case is not good. Maybe you need the control over the performance. So you might keep that in traditional. So we don't think traditional is ever going to really go away. Virtualization, you have uh, applications with stable usage pattern and no need for self-service. That's probably not a good business case for moving on. So virtual is very important and will really stay. And when you get to the cloud, you can see different versions. The, the most flexible, cheapest is the public cloud. On the other hand, concerns about data privacy, compliance, control will make some want to go with a private version which has lower flexibility. So these are sort of the spectrum, the options that you will have to combine. So let's move on, look at where are people today. This is based on an uh, Irish survey uh, in the beginning of 2013 uh, with 300 companies responding. So that's, that's uh, quite a significant survey showing uh, where Irish companies are today here. And you can see uh, here we've asked what is your top investment? What is, how uh, important are these, uh, what are the three most important uh, technologies you're investing in? And the yellow will show the top one, how many said the top one, and the blue one will show the aggregate, how often did it show up as the top three. And as you can see here, virtualization is the single most important, followed by security and cloud. Whereas if you look at the aggregated three, uh, an interesting point comes in here, mobility management. It's not the top priority, but still very, very important. But what I see from this is a focus on the core infrastructure, the data center. That is uh, where a lot of the investment is going. I compared this with a European survey we have also made, and what we see here is that automation is going up, virtualization slightly down, and cloud considerably down. To me, that shows that the rest of Europe is slightly more mature. This is more like what it looked like one year ago, two, year ago, two years ago, across the whole of Europe. Virtualization has a higher penetration, and cloud is moving down, which I think is interesting, in the sense this, to me, shows some maturity. 
It's not people are not investing in cloud in Europe. They absolutely are. 75% say that cloud is a good way to solve some of the other issues we have. But it means that cloud is seen more as a means to do something else. It's not a topic on its own. And I think that's a maturity step. Moving in the direction what we, of what I said before, of supporting business solutions, challenges in the business that need some IT to move forward. So why is this important to Ireland that you are perhaps slightly behind the curve? Well, markets are globalized. Competitors are coming into your market. Even if you are not planning to compete uh, on global scale, it doesn't mean that the others are not going to challenge you in your own market. So if others come into your market with increased flexibility, better able to adapt to changes in the market, then you are left behind because you will still be the ones where IT is a barrier to change. So keep that in mind, think about moving forward. We also asked in this IRIS survey, where are you with cloud? And I would say the further this shows uh, uh, what uh, you can see here, the, if some, do you use it full scale or limited scale or are, in, are you in the planning phase? And the more to the right somebody is, the more advanced they are. So what you see here is penetration is here fairly slow, uh, low. It's about around 30% uh, using uh, cloud, either full scale or uh, in limited scale. And interestingly, the in-house private cloud is the most uh, preferred solution, very much in line with what I see across Europe. Um, the, there is a lot of concern about uh, public cloud. So in-house cloud, not alone private, but in-house is really keeping it close. That is, that is the most popular solution. I wanted to comment on the low number of public clouds. See, I don't think this is a real number. I think the uptake of public cloud is a lot larger. It's just people are not aware of it being cloud. So if you go out and ask, do you use this application? Do you use this application? This one, this one? Then suddenly we get to actually more than 90% really using public cloud. So I think this is a reflection of two things, either when, uh, both when, when uh, public cloud is seen as strategically important and when the IT department is aware. Because there is one more issue around it that relates to this question of IT being a, IT and IT departments being the barrier to change. Because when businesses want to do something new, they go down and ask, can we have this? The answer is yes, in the half a year's time. And that's not satisfactory. And then they go out, look at the market, see, well, we can get a lot of things. We can take us about five minutes to get set up and that. So of course they want to do that. And so you'll see a lot of shadow IT. That may, might be nice for the business line, the, those guys who wanted the solution right away. But for IT departments who are looking for consistency and for cost cutting, which is also includes integration in the longer run, it might not be a very good thing. Something to think about, be aware of how you can tackle that. That has to do with the integration issues. But also of change in your own way of working. And this is really offering the new technologies, offering you the opportunity to turn away from being those saying, no, we can't do it, it takes time to say, yes, how can we actually help you? Because you will be able to. So one key point, I think, and now I'm quoting from uh, the uh, European survey, which uh, has, has uh, more than uh, 700 uh, respondents and uh, of them about 500 uh, using cloud already. How satisfied were they with it? There's been such a lot of hype about cloud. Is it really something? So I think the first point here is people have high expectations for cloud. So when about 40% and now those, uh, unfortunately I should have done that better, I realized it this morning, to the left you have those with a high uh, usage here, a high satisfaction. 40% say cloud have actually, despite the hype, exceeded their expectations. For IT cost reductions, for the impact on the broader business, how it had supported the business strategy and in bringing innovation. The highest satisfaction, interestingly, is with 
the impact on the broader business, and the lowest is the impact on the business strategy. So really getting back to the things I said beforehand, make sure the impact is uh, made on the whole business. So cost savings, is that, do people get that? That's something that's easy to measure, so that's what we, uh, or easier at least, to measure. Um, so we show here at the bottom, you'll see what people have achieved, and at the top, what they want, expect to achieve. So they do achieve cost savings, but actually not all that much. About half have seen less than 20% cost savings. This is what you would expect from most solutions when you do a change. In the longer run, they expect about 10% more. I think this is something to be really aware of. Getting into the question I raised before of the business case, of the transparency. Something you need to ask yourself, you ask your providers, your supporter, the, so those who help you design, but also those you will buy the solution from in the end. What are the cost savings? Real cost savings, not just you can get on this tiny piece of technology, you can make a cost saving. I've seen people saying you can make cost savings of 70%, maybe on that specific tiny little component. But the interesting thing is a bigger perspective. What are the real cost savings you're going to make? So summing this up, companies need change to grow. IT needs to become cost efficient and flexible, need to facilitate the change. Technologies are there. Virtualization is mature. Cloud is not mature yet, but as you saw from the satisfaction, it's mature enough to create the benefits to get started really using it in a serious way. And also, no single technology is a panacea for that. Today's IT call for a well thought through mix of the different, uh, different options. So what I want to conclude this is with some ideas for how to think this process well through. A four-step plan. See, most people start this journey with uh, point solutions. That is absolutely a good way to start it, leg legitimate way. You get some early experiences. But the key point when you think about developing your business long term is to create a strategy and a roadmap. And to do that, you need to start from the business side, then assess your IT estate. What is it that is required of each single application? Because everything will have different requirements. Whereas you're used to putting everything in one place, maybe on different technologies, but still at least within your own data center or your own facilities, it will now probably be spread on a lot of different providers, cloud providers, hosting providers, outsourcing perhaps, and your own. Uh, quite complex mix. So you need to assess very carefully what are the technical requirements, the business requirements, and what is the business case. Get help for this. I have put it here at the bottom. Get external help for this. It's a very good idea to do. There are uh, so many companies, service providers, vendors, who have done this before, and they have developed tools for it. So by doing, asking for help, you will uh, get best practices, you will be sure it will be uh, ev evaluated, your estate will be evaluated in a good way. But only get help, don't leave the decision to somebody else. So create then a roadmap, move on uh, to design your new infrastructure, and I put your in quotation here, because it's not going to be yours in the terms that you own it. Part of it you will own, a lot of it you will not own, but source from other uh, providers. Only then can you start uh, building it, and migrating it, or develop new applications. But what I want to put here as a key point at the end, get the governance and management in place from the very beginning. As I said, you will have it, you will, uh, suddenly you will not have things within a controlled environment. You will have it split out. Some of it you will have a lot of control over, the parts that you own yourself. Other things you will have very little control over. But if you put in place management and governance, you will 
keep the overview of what you're doing, which means you will have uh, as much control as you can have. Uh, and you will uh, know what is going on instead of being in the dark sometimes. This is important for security, for uh, compliance, for data management. Do it early. The earlier you do it, uh, the, the better it will be uh, when you add new components to it. Um, and again, this is not just about buying a piece of software. Software will be able to help you with this, and there are software packages, but also about doing it in a good way, using it in a good way. So again, I would suggest, really recommend, get help for doing this. So these uh, were the things that I wanted to touch on today. I hope I have uh, helped you raise a lot of questions to ask to uh, the other speakers and uh, vendors presenting uh, their solutions out in the front. Um, and I'll be around uh, during the day and at the panel, so I won't take any questions now. Yes, we are moving on, but thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>